Let's go. One, two, three. Get right here. Up underneath it. Push. Okay. Walk down it. Push it up. Walk down it. Push. Walk down it. Keep pushing. Keep pushing. Now hold on to it. Let it get out, Red. Okay, hold it. I do. Get out of your mind! Alright, let's go to the park. That's what I'm saying. Oh, you guys. Wow! Alright, you guys can get out of here. Let's go to the park. Well, here we go. All right, the lumber for the shop has just um, arrived at a wholesaler in a neighboring community about an hour away from the ranch. I'm about to drive through a real crazy little narrow mountain pass and I stopped to just kind of inspect the trailer real quick, make sure everything was good before I make a run up through here, especially coming back as well. It's gonna be about 6,000 pounds. I think there's right around 3,000 board feet of lumber but uh, this is the first big step on the shop. The next step is getting my hands on the OSB that we're gonna use. It's a very particular type of OSB. Uh, I think I can get it locally, but the second I get everything back to the ranch, we're gonna uh, hit it hard and start framing everything up. This is all of the structural lumber that will be required to frame up our shop.
we will need our OSB and then our trusses. But for the most part, this is all the lumber that will be used framing up our shop. The walls will be 14 feet tall. The pitch of the roof will be about a 512 pitch. I deliberately sought out very high quality lumber for the shop. Because of the height of the wall combined with the length of the wall, I wanted to have the straightest lumber I could find. I stumbled across Seneca lumber a few months back from one of our local lumber yard and the first thing I noticed was the quality. After noticing the quality of the wood, I went to their website, did a little bit of research, and quickly figured out this was the lumber that I wanted to use on the shop. I also discovered that they're still a family-owned company after three generations. This meant a lot to me. One of the other big factors that really jumped out at me was their focus on sustainable harvest. They recently planted their 40 millionth tree. I can't wait to start framing with this lumber on the shop. For the last month and a half or so, I've been using the Cub Cadet Zero Turn Mower, and it's by far the nicest mower I've ever used. The way the adjustable height works on the mower deck, I can switch it from two and a half inches on the front yard to three inches on the hill with the different types of grass. All of a sudden, mowing the grass is not a chore. Good boy. Good boy, Bandit. Get him. Get him, Bandit. Good boy. Hey, come here, Bandit. That's all. Oh, Bandit. Let's go, Bandit. Come on, Bandit. Let's go. Easy, Bandit. Easy. Easy, good boy. Our land is part of an old ranch. As a matter of fact, if you look around in the right places, there's remnants of an old homestead, even an old foundation, Every once in a while we find arrowheads around, but it's obvious that people have been coming to this area for a long time.
one of the men that ran cows up here in this area, was killed on a horse while trying to move these cows. There's a lot of history in this area with ranching. Just because we came along and decided to change things up here doesn't change the fact that every summer, the Cattlemen's Association pushes their cows up to graze for a couple of months. But there's been one major issue for quite some time that I've decided to try and get out in front of this year. On the property line between the Forest Service and private land, there used to be a barbed wire fence. About 10 or 12 years ago, there was a pretty significant forest fire and a bulldozer was used during the process. And during the forest fire, the fence was basically torn down. So after a few weeks of feeding, the cows typically wander back down the road, oftentimes up my driveway, looking for more feed. Because Idaho's a fence out state, it's basically our responsibility to keep the cows out. A couple of years ago, we fenced the lower five acres of our property, and this helps. But this year, I've decided I want to fix this fence that was damaged during the forest fire and try and keep the cows on the public land where they're supposed to be. Okay, I just got to a point where I, where I really couldn't go any further on the four-wheeler. Uh, and in the middle of this, a bunch of cows came running through the one strand that I've got up. I walked up further. There's existing T-posts up here. And uh, I found a whole bunch of barbed wire all the way down on the ground. So rather than string a new barbed wire, I'm going to leave what I put up and see if I can't just... Uh, make the old bar barbed wire work. I really feel like if I can just get something up, it's probably gonna keep the cows on this side. So this side is BLM or, or Forest Service, and this side is private land. This landowner is not interested in fixing their fence. Um, and it's not my land. So Anyway, I'm gonna try and keep pulling that uh, barbed wire up and see what happens. Initially, my plan was to run all new barbed wire from top to bottom. But there's really a lower section and an upper section where the cows cross. And my thoughts are maybe I can fix smaller sections of the fence initially and see if this is enough to keep the cows out before I make the effort to fence the entire 4,000 feet of fencing. As I started using the four-wheeler to stretch the fence, I discovered there in fact was still four strands of barbed wire on the ground under all the weeds. That without a whole lot of effort, I could stand back up and tie to the existing T-posts that are still here. After a good few hours of work on one of the hottest days of the year, I got the first couple hundred yards of fencing done. Now these cows have been doing what they've been doing for literally generations, so it may take some time to train them, but hopefully this is a step in the right direction. Fence is fixed. I got about 300 yards up the hill. Uh, when I have time, I'm just going to keep working up the fence line, doing everything I can to fix somebody else's fence, but this alone right here should make a big difference. Okay, we could hear the cows making noise, bawling all night last night, which makes me think they, they were not able to get through the fence, which is what I'm hoping for. Uh, I'm going to run 
the four wheeler up there and just kind of inspect real quick and see how it went. Okay, the cows are up here where they're supposed to be. This is good. Since I picked up the excavator, it's been a little bit hard to start, even on the warmest days of the year. The previous owner put a new battery in it, but like everything else around the place, I wanted to put a battery in it that I knew would handle not only the heat, but the cold as well. I ordered the right Odyssey battery to put in the excavator, and it immediately solved my hard start problem. By the way, Odyssey Batteries doesn't pay me a penny to talk about their products. I've found over the last four years that between the extreme heat and the extreme cold, batteries do not last long. Since I started using Odyssey Batteries, We've had no issues whatsoever. When I find a product like theirs that stands up the way that it does, it's hard for me not to talk about it. I've put Odyssey batteries in my truck, in all the four-wheelers, in the side-by-sides, and now my excavator. We had a little bit of rain last week and I was unable to get up to the cabin location with my four-wheeler, partly because the tires on the four-wheeler and some of the tires on the Ranger need to be replaced. I found some partially used tires on the local internet and I've just been waiting for the opportunity to go change them out. I picked up some really aggressive tires for the Honda four-wheeler, so it should now be able to get wherever I need it to go. I also picked up two new tires for the Ranger. So now all six of the tires on the Ranger are in good condition. And I also picked up a set of four tires for the Arctic Cat Prowler. It technically needs the clutch adjusted, and I haven't done a whole lot with it, but it always starts right up. This side-by-side -side is more or less supposed to be Cedars, but it needs a little bit of work. Most of the plastics are cracked and dried out, so I'll have to find some new plastics for it at some point. After taking all the tires into town, having the old ones taken off, the new ones mounted, I reinstalled them on the four-wheeler, the Ranger, and the Arctic Cat. So now I should be able to get back to the cabin without any issues. The 6x6 Ranger has been a lifesaver. That thing typically can go anywhere I need it to go. I've loaded all the materials needed for the cabin, loading it quite heavy, and it still goes where I need it to go. But putting the right tires on everything should make a big difference as well.
once we get the shop finished, we will now have the space and the condition to make repairs as needed without sitting in the gravel. Hopefully at that point, I'll get that Arctic cat prowler going and maybe fix it up a little bit for cedar. I'm not going to give you all the details on the OSB that we're using on the shop because it's a very particular OSB. If all goes well, it should show up this week. All that I'm going to say is it should be better than what I used on the house. Hopefully, this time next week, I'm telling you more about it.